Welcome to HodgePodge Australia. Today we're doing Olaf meringues. I have four eggs, I have one cup of caster sugar, I have two bowls for separating the eggs, and I have some salt. That's all you need for meringues. I've got my baking tray lined with baking paper. I've got my oven preheated to 110 degrees. And first off, we're going to use a nice, clean, dry bowl to put our egg whites in. So let's get separating. Separating our egg whites into separate bowls from the egg yolk means that we can do them one at a time. And if we mess one up and the yolk breaks, we aren't doing it all into the same bowl so we're not messing up the entire batch. So separating the whites into one, yolk into the other. Once you're happy with what you've got in the yolk, uh, sorry, in the whites, then you can tip it into the larger bowl. Then we continue to do that for the next three eggs. All the yolks that you have left over can be put away in the fridge to use in a quiche or something else later down the track. Now that we have all our egg whites in our bowl, we're just going to whisk them up on the highest speed and we're going to make sure that we do that until they have soft peaks formed. Now that we're happy with the way our egg whites are whisked up, you can see there they're nice and solid, got some nice peaks and they're also nice and foamy still, so it's time to take that off the whisk so it can whisk around again and we're going to start adding in our caster sugar. We're going to put the eggs back onto whisk and then we're going to add in the caster sugar one spoon at a time. So we're not just going to dump the entire cup in there. We need, it does take time, it does take patience. You're going to put in a little bit of a spoon, you're going to let that get whisked in and you're going to add in some more, you're going to let that get whisked in and you need to take your time with meringue. You need to make sure that that sugar is dissolving in with the eggs otherwise it's just not going to turn out. As you can see here as we're adding in the sugar, it's becoming nice and silky instead of just being frothy eggs. It's becoming a lovely silky egg mixture. Now that it's all done, you can see it's perfectly stiff. We do the test, nothing coming out. That's always a interesting test and it's always a bit nerve-wracking but there it is nicely whipped meringue mixed with its sugar a good way to test if the sugar is dissolved is to put a little bit in between your fingers and to rub it together if you can feel sugar granules if it's not dissolved enough using our piping bag and a large nozzle as you can see there we're adding our piping mixture into our bag and we're just going to squeeze that down and we're going to start creating our Olaf meringues We're going to do a large circle, so piping it out onto our piping bag. One large circle right behind it so that it's joining a smaller circle and then a bit of a long circle. So I suppose a long circle doesn't exist. That would be an oval, wouldn't it? Here. Well done, let's go back to school. So again, we're doing a large circle, a smaller circle and an oval at the top. And we want them all to be connected because we want, obviously want them joined when they're cooked. So let's go ahead and do a few more of those. We obviously don't want these little peaks on each thing, so we're going to go through with our finger and we're just going to dab down the peak to make it nice and smooth, or as smooth as we can get it, but we just don't want that little tip on the on each section of Olaf. So going through and smoothing those out, they're then going to go into the oven. As soon as you put them into the oven, turn the oven down to 90 degrees. This is all in Celsius, so if you're in Fahrenheit, I apologize, we all need to convert it. Popping it in there, and they're actually going to go in for one hour and 30 minutes. Basically, they're just drying out. They're not really cooking, they're drying out. Here are our finished Olafs, all lovely and dry, and you can tell they're done because when you tap the back of them, it sounds lovely and hollow and crisp. We're going to get ready to start decorating them with royal icing. I've just colored some royal icing in some black and some orange. I'm really happy with the black actually, usually it comes out a little bit grey but this has come out nicely in black. I've popped them into just a couple of Ziploc bags because they don't need to be big, we're only doing a little bit of piping and we just need to cut a tiny little section off the end of the piping bags. So what we're going to do is 
pop our little Olaf down and we're going to add some eyes, we're going to add mouth. Of course Olaf wouldn't be Olaf without his big orange nose and we're also going to pop some eyebrows on him because I always thought his eyebrows were very expressive so we can't have Olaf without some eyebrows. Don't forget to put the little dots down his belly. He has one in the section in the middle and he has two on the bottom. So this dries nice and quickly as well because it's only a little bit of royal icing so it's nice and touch dry very very quickly. Adding in his nose, at first it was a little bit too small so I've just made it a little bit larger. decorate your other Olafs. So let's get a production line going. Lots of eyes, lots of mouths, lots of noses, lots of eyebrows, lots of buttons down the belly. And there we have our Olaf meringues. They're that easy. The great thing about Olaf meringues or any meringues is they can be made days in advance. They do take a little while to bake obviously, a couple of hours in the oven and then time to cool after that. You need to cool them for a few hours as well. But they're fantastic for kids parties, Lovely and easy, not many ingredients, and you can be so creative with them. Thanks so much for tuning in to HodgePodge Australia again. I do hope you subscribe and come back and see us again soon.